God's people would be led back to God with Moses as his chosen earthly shepherd, working in conjunction with God, the heavenly shepherd. Are you getting a little clearer view of your calling now? I hope you are. Having the call of God on your life is only half the equation. You must say yes to God. We're going to be talking about that next as we continue on in Exodus. Here's I Will Go. It's Crystal Lewis on Nightwatch.
Melissa Lewis, I Will Go. You're listening to John and Heather, and you're tuned in to Night Watch here on The Voice of Hope. We are moving our way through Chapter 3 of Exodus. And tonight, our subject matter is the divine calling. And I really felt, as I, as I said earlier in the program, if you weren't listening or you weren't tuned in quite yet, that I felt that there would be some in our listening audience that would feel a calling, even as we're reading this chapter on Moses. And so we hope that, that as we read that, that's happening to some of you in our listening audience, even if you don't know Jesus yet. You don't know that, that God has qualified you beautifully um, and that he just needs you to believe in him and believe that he has need of you and your special talent and skill for uh, the harvest that is all around you. So we're on verse 13 of Exodus chapter 3. And God has just really called Moses to do a very specific thing. He has. And now here's Moses' reply in verse 13. Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, Well, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? <laughs> Notice he's having a conversation just like we'd have with God. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, we talk about... This isn't a religious transaction, John. This is a relational transaction. Mm -hmm. It's certainly a, a holy transaction, no doubt, because he's got his sandals off. He's on the backside of the wilderness, uh, and, and he's talking to God. And it's very relational, but still clearly a hugely holy moment. Mm -hmm. It might not be a burning bush for you, but it might be a dream. It might be a recurring dream. It might be a vision. It might be something or someone significant that keeps telling you something, uh, or you keep reading the same verses in the Bible that you just can't let go of. Um, it might be kind of a tug of war um, to get started on your spiritual calling. I'm thinking too, Heather, it starts with a conversation with God. Sometimes God will speak to us in the night season or wake us up or speak to our hearts or speak to us through a scripture or a circumstance. And we begin this conversation with the Lord. And it begins to unpack. Now, this is the very first conversation that Moses has had with the Lord. But for his entire life, from then that point on, he begins to speak to God. And there's other scriptures that say they spoke face to face. Mm, it's very powerful. It's a very powerful story. If you've never read it, we really hugely recommend it to you. It's such a powerful one. So verse 14 says this. God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you were to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. Uh, you know, uh, just to be there, just to be leaning in and even watching this conversation going on is, is what, what we're actually, you're being invited into this conversation that God is having with Moses. You know, it, it, this can also be read something like this. The Lord, the I am, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. We can't just buzz past the depth of this calling moment. He was being visited by this great God whom his iconic forefathers with names like Abraham, like Isaac and Jacob, had met with too. This was not a small moment for Moses, nor should it be to you when you're called it's what he intends for you to do for him, to lead the people back to worship him. It's actually the same call Moses got. That's what your job would be in whatever he calls you to do. It will always be to call others back to God or to God for the first time. I love it that God is saying, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's who I am. Tell him again. He's saying, remind them. Remind them of their history, where they came from. They're going to get this. They need to be reminded who they are because what I'm about to do hinges on that as well. It does. It does. It's powerful. He goes on to say, this is my name 
forever. You know, and, and once that name, the I Am, has been disclosed, it's been used ever since. Mm. I Am. <clears throat> it's the name you shall call me. He decided to show Moses a reflection of himself that hadn't heretofore really been disclosed at this same level. Because he disclosed himself. You know, God has a lot of facets, you know, John, yeah. we talk about them. The rock, the redeemer, the righteous one, the judge, right. all these things. So he's disclosing himself to Moses as the I am. You know, <clears throat> and it's, it's provocative and it's stimulating to know that you've been let in on a disclosure so big, you almost hardly know what to do with it. It's like, I was thinking today, and maybe this is a bad illustration, John, I don't know, but it, we used to play this game as kids, and, it's, and, a, and it's like hot potato. It's called hot potato. And you would actually take a potato and it's hot, and you would throw it into somebody's hands, and they had to hand it off to someone else quickly, because it was hot. It actually burned your hands. And you would toss it to the next person, but notice that Moses has no one to toss it to because he's on the backside of the desert when he gets told this by God. So it burns into your soul, and you can't escape the disclosure because it's so big, and he knows it's going to have an effect on you, and it's, it hits you in a supremely unforgettable way. And you know what? God's done it on purpose. That call is meant to have that effect on you. Verse 16. Go assemble the elders of Israel and say to them, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and Jacob, appeared to me and said, I have watched over you, and I have seen what has been done to you in Egypt, and I have promised to bring you up out of your misery in Egypt into the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Pezzarites, Hivites, and Jebusites. 